Hi, my name is Trimastro4, and in this video I'll be reviewing an older Lionel product, and it is the second generation Santa Fe Northern number 3759. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. To start this video off, let me go ahead and give a brief history lesson on Santa Fe 3759. Santa Fe 3759 is considered a northern type steam locomotive with a 484 wheel arrangement underneath the boiler. In 1928, she was delivered to Santa Fe by the Baldwin Locomotive Works and became the newest addition to Santa Fe's 3751 northern passenger class of locomotives. Originally, she was designed to be a coal burner with 73-inch drivers, but was soon converted to oil in 1936 and went through a rebuilt phase between 1938 and 1941, where she received 80-inch drivers. For revenue service, 3759 and her siblings became valuable assets to the Santa Fe by pulling passenger trains through the dark times of the Great Depression, answered the call of World War II, and single-handedly kept Santa Fe all the way for over two decades. Unfortunately though, by the 1950s, the fate of 3759 and her siblings turned a dark corner when desalization swept across the nation like a dark plague. Unfortunately, with steam being held hostage by desalization, 3759 was put on a storage track and retired in 1953. But fortunately though, there was still a glimmer of hope for 3759 and a last hurrah for steam on Santa Fe. In February 1955, the Railway Club of Southern California requested Santa Fe bring 3759 back out of retirement and be chartered on a special excursion run dubbed the Farewell to Steam to really give steam its final last hurrah along the Santa Fe route. On February 6, a round trip between Los Angeles Union Station and Barstow, California took place, and fortunately, on YouTube, there are many examples of this trip preserved for you to actually go and view, which I'll leave a link down in the description. While on the trip, 3759 performed flawlessly by making stops in Pasadena and also San Bernardino, where she saw huge crowds of fans adorning the large locomotive. Unfortunately, though, by the end of this trip, she was soon put back into retirement and then donated to Kingman, Arizona in 1957 as a park display where she now currently sits. Now that you have a bit of knowledge on the real 3759 and also her significance, let me now go ahead and get into the stats and facts of the model right in front of you. This model was last released in Lionel's 2012 Volume 1 catalog and was also offered alongside Santa Fe's famous 3751 Northern and was also offered with some matching Santa Fe Grand Canyon passenger cars. Its product number is 6-11333 and soon started showing up to hobbyists around October of that same year. Under the hood, this model is powered by one large flywheeled motor and is also equipped with two fan-driven smoke units. The first one being located up front for the main smokestack and the other being located towards the middle for the smoking whistle. For electronics, this model is equipped with Lionel's Legacy Rail Sounds and is also equipped with Lionel's Legacy Command System, which means you can operate this locomotive either under Lionel's Legacy Command System, Team CC Command System, or simply with a loop of track and transformer under conventional mode. Now that you know what this model has to offer, let me now go ahead, take a closer look, and show you all of the wonderful separately applied and molded in detail that this model has to show. Starting up front, here you can see we have a nice looking pilot with various pieces of detail, such as two separately applied steps on either side, separately applied brake hose detailing with red tips, a separately applied coupler cup bar, and also a chain at the end running through right in the middle, a scale O-gauge coupler. Looking on up, here you can see we have a nice die cast metal air compressor shield with two grab irons on either side, a handrail running in the middle, and also some detail in the back, such as these two separately applied air compressors and right in the middle a separately applied feed water heater pump. Moving on up, here you can see we have a nicely painted smoke box front, which is nicely detailed with molded in rivet detailing, steps, hinges, a central headlight with a number board underneath, 
two separately applied marker lights, which do come on when the locomotive is in operation, a brass bell in the middle, two separately applied handrails that run along the length of the boiler, and then finally, like always, with most legacy boilers, this one opens up like that. Moving on around to the engineer side of the locomotive, starting on the top, here you can see on the side of the boiler we have the continuation of that handrail, two three molded in steps, two separately applied builder's plates, the beginning of the throttle linkage, and also the beginning of the running board which also runs along the length of the locomotive. Looking on down, you can see underneath the running board we have some detail in the form of separately applied pipework, the cylinders, valve gear, and then right down at the bottom, a nice little molded in step and the pilot trucks for this locomotive. Continuing down the side of the locomotive, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have the eight driving wheels with a nice set of polished side rods. Above that, here you can see we have a separately applied power reverser, some more separately applied pipework, a molded in air compressor tank, and also the continuation of the running board. On the boiler itself, here you can see we have the continuation of the throttle linkage, the sand dome with 3759 on the side, a number board, the whistle, the continuation of the handrail, and also separately applied pipework coming off of the sand dome. Looking at the firebox and cab area, starting at the bottom, here you can see we have the trailing truck for this model, as well as the firebox itself, and as you can see in this little area itself, there is a whole lot of detail to be shown, such as separately applied pipework above and below the firebox, a separately applied water injector, and also the end of the running board, which then transitions into steps going underneath the cab itself. Moving on up towards the boiler, here you can see we have yet even more detail, such as reverser linkage, a separately applied pipework, molded in boiler bands, steps, and washout plugs, and then also the end of both the throttle and handrail. And then finally looking at the cab itself, here you can see it is nicely detailed with a separately applied grab iron, sun visor, molded in rivet detailing, the letter ATSF nicely typed along the middle, and then three windows with clear plastic inserts, two of them on this side, one in the front, and then finally one of the windows does slide open and close. Moving on around to the back of the locomotive, starting at the bottom, here you can see right down below we have the locomotive's drawbar as well as its infrared sensor which sends signals between the locomotive and tender. Moving on up, on the back of the cab itself, you can see there is also a bunch of detail, such as molded and rivet detailing around the perimeter, two separately applied grab irons on either side, and then also two windows with clear plastic inserts. Looking on inside the cab, here you can see we have two separately applied and hand-painted crew figures, one for the fireman and one for the engineer. And then right in the middle, here you can see we have a nicely detailed back head, which is also nicely illuminated with a cab light when the locomotive's in operation and at a full stop. Taking a quick look at the fireman side of the locomotive, and as you can see, it is primarily the same detail-wise as the engineer side, but there are a few minute differences, such as different positioning of pipework, a molded-in toolbox towards the middle, and then also a separately applied air compressor underneath the cab. On top of the boiler, here you can see on the right hand side we have a molded in Worthington feed water heater, and then right next to it the main smokestack. Now, in order to fill the main smokestack with smoke fluid, you simply pour it directly down the stack. Now, what's something interesting about this stack is it is actually interchangeable with two other stacks. The first one being the one that you see right in front of you, the second being a normal standard stack, and then the third one being an extending stack. Continuing down the side of the boiler, here you can see we have a molded in superheater patch, and then right next to it, some separately applied pipework, two number boards, and then the sand dome with two molded in sand caps and two separately applied grab irons. Now, in order to operate this locomotive, Lionel was actually quite clever to hide all of the operating switches underneath the sand cover. Now, with it off, it reveals we have the run program switch, the Odyssey speed control on and off switch, the on and off switch for the smoking whistle, as well as the smokestack. And to simply cover the switches up, you just take the plate and snap it back on like that. Continuing on down towards the back of the locomotive, over on the right hand side, here you can see we have three hand painted pop off valves, a separately applied whistle with a separately applied wire lanyard, which goes towards the cap, and then right in the middle, the steam dome for this model. Now, in order to fill the smoking whistle feature with smoke fluid, Lionel was also a little bit ingenious on covering the hole, 
And in order to fill it, you just simply take the top off of the steam dome, which uncovers a little hole directly into the smoke unit, and you just simply take your smoke fluid and pour it directly down that hole. Moving on down to the left hand side, here you can see we have a separately applied pipe work, dynamo, and another separately applied part for the water injector system. And then finally looking at the roof of the cab, here you can see we have some more molded in rivet detailing, and then two air vents which do slide easily back and forth. Now that I've shown you the locomotive, let me go ahead and move over to the tender and show you what it has to offer. Starting up front, here you can see down below we have the tender's end of the wireless straw bar, a Bunker C oil heating tank, two molded in steps leading up to the tender deck, two separately applied grab irons on either side, and then right in the front we have a sandbox and various different molded in and separately applied pipe work. Moving over to the engineer side of the tender, and as you can see, the face of it is really nicely detailed with molded in rivet detailing, a very small separately applied builder's plate, the Santa Fe and the number 3759 is nicely typed along the side of it, and then down below here you can see we have the two six wheel trucks which are nicely detailed with leaf spring and brake shoe detailing, and then right in the middle here you can see we have a molded in die cast metal toolbox. Looking at the back of the tender, starting down in the bottom, here you can see we have the model's electrocoupler, which can be thrown by either using Lionel's Legacy or TMCC command system. Nicely enough, Lionel also tucked it back underneath the frame so that the connection between cars and tenders look a little bit nicer. Looking on either side of the coupler, here you can see we have two separately applied ladders going up to the top deck, and then on the back panel itself, here you can see we have more rivet detailing, a separately applied ladder going up to the top, a builder's plate, number 3759 typed up on the back panel, the capacity load numbers on the back panel as well, two separately applied grab irons on either side, and then finally up top we have a working backup light which comes on when the locomotive is put into reverse. Finally, taking a quick look on top of the tender, and as you can see, this model is an oil burner which means there is not a separately pile of coal on the right hand side. Now, this does not mean that there is a lack of detail on top of the tender. For example, towards the middle, here you can see we have two molded in oil hatches, three separately applied grab irons, molded in detailing along the top deck, and then towards the rear, here you can see we have two water hatches, which do open up, and if I open the rear one, here you can see it reveals the master volume control knob for the tender. Now that I've shown you both the locomotive and tender, let me go ahead, fire the model up, and give you a sampling of some of these sound features that this model has to offer. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. I read you. Over. Please start up and stand by. Roger that. Ready to move. Out. With the locomotive fired up, let me now go ahead and begin that sound sampling, first off with the quillable whistle. Here is the bell. Here is the steam blowdown sound. Next, here is the water fill up as well as the oil fill up sound. And then finally, here is a sampling of both the crew and tower comm sounds. Dispatcher here, you are cleared, outbound, over. Copy that. I'm green, out. Dispatcher, air is made. Am I clear? Over. Affirmative, the track is yours, over. Copy that. We got your signal, out. This is the dispatcher. 
We've got a tender full of water and oil. I've got some cars coupled up behind the tender, so I think it is time to go on ahead and take this locomotive for a spin around the layout. That about wraps up this product review, but before I go, let me go ahead and answer the two questions that I normally ask around this time of the video, and they are, what is the original MSRP price for this model, and also, what is my personal opinion about it? Well, to start off, the original MSRP price from 2012 is right at $1,300. Now, since this model is about 10 years old, 
you would be pretty hard pressed to actually find one of these first gen legacy northerns around in either your hobby shop. But thankfully though, they do once in a while pop up on the second hand market for around eleven to twelve hundred dollars. So they have held their value over the nine to ten years, but they've also gone down a bit since Lionel has re-released these with updated legacy electronics. Let me now go ahead to the second question, which was, what is my personal opinion about this model? Well, overall, this model has really held up, held up its candle. Over nine years of its existence, and even into the next generation of Legacy Northerns, this model in particular really does outshine in detail, performance, and also value of over the years. In my opinion, I would prefer to get the 2012 first gen Legacy Northern rather than the second gen that Lionel came out around 2020 because the model from 2012 is just far way better than the 2019 or 2020 version. The detail is a whole lot better. The brass parts are actually, actually look like brass instead of some type of cheap gold and overall just looks a whole lot better and performs outstandingly. Well, that's it for this video, but before you go, I just want to say thank you very much for actually clicking on this video and also watching it to the very end. It takes me a long time to produce these high quality product review videos for you to enjoy, so I do dearly appreciate your support. Now, if you would like to continue to support my channel, do please click on the subscribe button because then that will allow my channel to grow and also allow you to no longer miss any of my future videos. Also, while you're at it, please do also click on that like button because then that will let me know that you like to continue to see some of this content and also lets YouTube know that my channel is actually worth something. But anyway, my name is Trainmaster04 and I'll be seeing you next time.